guys, we're back here in New Jersey in the Trash and the Teas kitchen. But um, every Thursday, I go live and I share an easy project for you to repurpose or reuse clothing that you may no longer need. Today, we have a special guest. So, you want to tell everybody who you are? <laughs> no, you're right there on the screen. Look. Okay, this is Tristan. This is one of my little guys. Sam is the guy. And then the other little one is under the table. <laughs> and then our puppy's under the table. Sam's not helping out today, so I'm going to try to do it all again. I have the iPad here. I'm going to leave Tristan in charge for hey, a second. Hi, Kate. See, can you see that little sign there? Yeah. It says, hey. Mm. It's not on the screen yet, but you can see it on the TV. <laughs> All right. Kate, did you see my post this morning? We are going to be making reusable produce bags. So if you haven't already made them from the book, this will definitely help you out in your going green journey. I have onions in here because we just got back from the lake on Monday and that's the only groceries that we really have. All right. Well, I'm glad you're tuning in from vacation. As everyone starts to flood in, guys, let us know where you're watching from. You can't talk while we're talking. I can't hear myself saying it. <laughs> so Tristan wants to learn how to make reusable produce bags this morning as well. These bags I are, are previously one of my best-selling products that I sold in the Trash in the Tea store. There are... Some of the onions are crushed. The onions are crushed. Like, hey, I can just pull out a piece of yeah. right they, are, they are available in the store now if anybody See. doesn't want to DIY their own. You guys, I do sell them and I'm happy to make them for you. All you need for this project today is, do you want to show them what they need? You're going to need a bag, I need a t-shirt, safety pins, some yarn, scissors, and then... It's a rotary cutter. So for today's project, you probably already have a lot of this stuff laying around. You need a pair of scissors. And remember, last week we talked about how important it is to have dedicated fabric scissors and not use your kitchen scissors because you're going to find that they're gonna cause you a little bit of trouble. You need a safety pin. We're going to be using t-shirt yarn again. So if you haven't watched the first video of the Remake and Take series, I will go over that briefly. Uh, just to show you guys how to line that out. Oh, and you're going to need a sewing machine. <laughs> a sewing machine and just a t-shirt. That's all we need for today's project. Wait, how would you use a t-shirt to make this? Oh. That's what you're going to find out today. Okay. Alright. Does this look like any piece of a t-shirt that you've seen before? No. No. Except for this part. Except for that part? Yeah, what's that part? Like right here. Oh, you're on to my magic. All right. So Tristan just figured it out. We are going to be using the bottom half of your t-shirt here to make a reusable produce bag. Now, anytime I go to the farmer's market or the grocery store, I always get compliments or comments about my bags. And for a regular household, we have and there's four of us and a dog in the house who eats fruits and vegetables as well. Especially uh, bananas. Especially. Lexi loves bananas. Uh, I usually carry around... Bubba. Okay, sorry. I usually carry around uh, four to six bags just for my family alone. And I use these for onions, for apples, anything that you pick up at the farmer's market. You want to put your lettuce or your spinach in here. But also, if you are a gardener, and it's almost the fall, so when you take your bulbs out, if you want to leave them to air dry, <laughs> if you want to leave them to air dry, um, these bags made in a little smaller size work really well. You can hang them up 
in your kitchen on a hook or you know however you'd like so all you need to get started like we said was are you gonna join us now that you're eating cookies all right <laughs> We need just the bottom half of the t-shirt. So we're gonna fold our t-shirt in half, put it down. I have a cutting mat down here in front of me. I'm going to use my rotary cutter here. And I, I'm going to cut. You went first, but you need to put this down. Yeah, we need to take the safety latch off. We know all about the safety latch. So we're going to cut about 11 inches. If you have a t-shirt, you want about 11 inches this way, and then we're, I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So, 11 inches, 10 inches, somewhere in that. I can't do this sitting down. Almost. Almost. This is what happens when you take your rotary cutter in your purse for weeks. Maybe Nate might need a new blade. Okay. So now we have a big loop again. What we're going to do is we're going to cut that loop right in half. Mm -hmm. So you now have two beginnings of two produce bags. And I already have some that have been started here. So it should look, even this one, this was a white t-shirt and what I did was I used Rick dye and just dip dyed them. It's a great way. Oh. Aunt Tracy's watching from Texas. Can you say hi to Aunt Tracy? Hi. <laughs> you think someone might need a haircut? My no. brother. <laughs> Your brother? Okay. So these were white t-shirts, and then like I said, we just used a dye. You could use natural plant dyes. Um, anything like that would be a little more eco-friendly. So next what we're going to do is we're going to cut in our little slits. That's going to help make our bags breathable. You can see here. You're going to lay down your rectangle piece and fold it up two inches. Now that you have that done, grab a hold of your sister, your scissors. <laughs> hey Al, thanks for tuning in. Have you made these yet, Al? Okay, so next what we're going to do is just cut a half an inch slit oh, I mean, into this corner here. Oh, so that's how you guys the see, we also have company right here. Hey, Lex. I don't have any food for you, baby. I'll give her a It's happening. It's a happening place here in the kitchen. Let's just say, stop. So once you get to the everything. end of the line, you're going to again start to cut a half inch slit. Now the second. In the middle of each. Right. The, you you're right. The second half inch half inch slits are going to be cut in between the first like ones. Here, here, here. That gives you an idea. And these are about two inches apart. Okay, then you're going to continue doing that all the way down the row. I have this one halfway done, so I'm going to finish up here. Good morning, you guys, as you're joining. Thanks so much for tuning in this morning. We are making reusable produce bags. You guys can use these for farmers markets, to store your produce here in the in the kitchen, okay. or um, where else? You could use them when you go to the beach. Or well, you could use them for toys, because don't remember you made my and I, I did, I did. You could use those for your sand toys when you go to the beach. That would be a great, um, those great little, idea. Um, Star Wars toys where they run into each other. Yeah, we've used the That's same right. same project without the slits to organize little miniature action figures and Star Wars toys. And then Gavin. Hey, can't be. This is like time out in the kitchen. We have now raided the cabinets. We are <laughs> pouring ourselves some milk. No water. Water. Summer vacation. I warned you guys about this. I thought he was going to be here to help and run the sewing machine for me. I am. Oh. Okay. Now, once you get to the bottom of your bag, I want you guys to stop with about two inches from the bottom here. 
Well, you can see when I pull. I don't want to pull it too much when it's in well, this. So it no, no, it won't no. rip. I don't want to pull it apart too much from this position because what will happen, it will actually cause the edges here to curl a little and that is going to cause a little bit of an issue as we're going to sew on this edge. So make sure that you try to leave it as flat as possible without pulling it because you don't want that to curl. That is one of the characteristics that we often talk about that's a desirable um, characteristic when working with knits and that helps us to not have to finish the edges as professionally as working with a woven because it won't fray. The edge will just curl and it kind of will um, reinforce itself. So now that we have made it this far, we have our one square. If you want, you can go ahead and do your second one. But for the sake of our video cast, we are going to sit down at our machine and we will sew it. Now I want you to sit down at your machine and I want to show you guys just something really quick. Every machine, it doesn't have to be this one, your machine at home will most likely offer you a straight stitch capability or a zigzag capability. Now this is important when working with knits because so often we talk about using a serger with knits and all of the produce bags that I sell in my store, they do come with serged seams. But this is for you, this project's made especially for you, so if you have a serger and you're comfortable using one, go for it and serge your, your bag closed. If not, this is important for you to listen to. When you sit down at your machine, your machine will have a straight stitch. And the straight stitch, I don't think you can see the thread I chose, so I apologize. The straight, it's like a white one. yeah, it's kind of like white, off-white. The straight stitch when you're sewing on knits, if I pull this even a little bit, you can yeah, hear so that nice those stitches well. begin to pop. So this is not your most secure option for making any type of construction with a knit. Okay? So what we're going to use today is called a zigzag stitch. I'm going to try to get in a little bit closer so you can see. That. that is a zigzag stitch and now when I pull this you're going to see that it gives the knit more flexibility to stretch. I'm going to get Tristan all set up here because he's going to do our sewing. Hey Heather, thanks so much for joining in you guys. If you have any questions, I will. If you have any questions about working with knits, please, please don't ever hesitate to post it here or on the wall. Also, we have a really active... Wait, what's a wall? Uh, the wall is on Facebook. So this is a video. People can comment in the video underneath of the video, or they can post comments on the wall of my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that he doesn't know what Facebook is. Okay, so we're gonna start here at our top corner edge. But I'll as you know, all the time. I know what it is. You do. It's where you can like post stuff, read up other people's stuff. Yeah, you can keep up with friends. But right now, you don't need to worry about <laughs> Facebook, right? Because you see your friends in school. So we have, uh, as you guys know, I love using the whatever features are already in the knits, and then just repurposing those. So you again. Just like with our skirts, we are going to use this bottom hem as our casing. That's where our, our drawstring will go through. So as we sit down to sew, we want to make sure that our, our stitches are going to begin right below where this cover stitch line is. A little bit closer. We're going to start stitching right from here down and leave this part open. All right. Get this all set up for Tristan here. I hit, I hit the button. I know you can hit the button, honey. Let me pull this a little bit closer. I'm using a Bernina Virtuosa 153. I have my stitch set to the number two, which is a zigzag, and I have it just slightly uh, lengthened. Shush! Okay, it's fine. Go ahead. Here. Show everybody how to sew it. You need two hands. Stop, stop. We have just, we just want to make sure we secure that top one by using our back stitch. Okay, two hands 
down there. Not underneath the machine. Uh, go ahead. I know you know how to do it. And as he's... No, not, not yet. We already did that. He wants to backstage now. So what we're doing is we are using the presser foot itself to be the guide for the edge of the fabric. And that just helps you to get a consistent line. That's just a nice, fun trick. If you guys um, are not familiar with your machines, stop. Okay. So if you're not familiar with your machines, there are markings right here on the throat plate of your machine, but also here on your presser foot. We're using the edge of our presser foot to the right and lining our fabric up. Also, my machine is set so that once I come to the edge of the fabric, I leave my presser foot or my needle position will stay down. This is very helpful for me when I'm appliquing different designs and um, it's a, another great feature of our machine that we have here. Okay, go ahead, hit the gas. Not, not so fast, no, not so fast. Go ahead. A little bit faster than that. In between. Now, once we get to the edge, we are going to back stitch again just to secure that corner. Okay, stop. And then press it again. All right, stop. Hit it with your heel. Just your heel. There you go. And then there you have your bag that has the zigzag stitch down the side. And. Well, can't you pick like the first, second, or third? It doesn't really matter. Well, all the different stitches on the machines uh, offer different functionality. So some of them would work for this, uh, you but not all of them. Sometimes could you use a one? Sometimes you could use the one. I use the one when I'm appliqueing all the time when I'm making the t-shirts. Okay, so we're gonna turn that right side out. You're gonna see that your corners are gonna be nice and tight. And then what you can do from here is just give it a nice tug. You're not going to break this bag. You're not going to rip the slits. You're not going to pop your stitches because we used an, a zigzag stitch. You're going to find that once we stretch it out, the little slits that we cut in here are going, are going to start to roll over on themselves. And again, that's reinforcing that. These bags are very strong. I know a few years ago, I did a test and they held over 47 pounds of fruit without ripping, okay? 4,100? 47. Huh. That's a lot of fruit, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because don't every fruit weigh around like five to seven pounds? Mm. Sometimes. Not every fruit's going to weigh five to watermelon seven pounds. Can. A watermelon. watermelon could. Okay, so we have our t-shirt yarn. We're going to take a safety pin, put it right there on the edge, and feed it through here. I do apologize if you guys let me know if it's too distracting with my guests today. Um, and I'll give them more quiet jobs, but I hope not. I hope you guys enjoy seeing. This is what real life looks like here. How many of you have kids at home? Let me know in the comments if you're tuning in. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the drawstring in on our bag. Now this bag was made from a t-shirt that was white, then later dip dyed to give it this effect. And I have the green t-shirt yarn. Now, I'm kind of greedy with my t-shirt yarn because you know I use it for so many different projects. So once I have a good amount here, enough to make a drawstring, I tie mine off just like this. However, if you want to be able to pull your, if I tie it off like this, I just, slide it down and that's good enough for me I don't mind I don't mind having to do that if you prefer to have a drawstring a little bit differently 
you could run it through a second time. So we came out on both ends. Okay. We're boys. I am giving you the evil mom look right now. Who else has an evil mom look? <laughs> oh, thank you. They like to sew. That's great. Carrie, how, what kind of things do your kids like to sew? Boys. I'm starting to sweat. I'm getting like a little, a little anxious. I think that's a good word. Sam, please get out of the cabinets. If you are not going to help on the video, please leave the room for the next 10 minutes. That's our deal. They, they know the deal. Hey, I'm helping you. Okay. Are you already started on Christmas gifts? Well, this might be one you could add or like housewarming gifts for friends or family, teacher gifts. Okay. So I've gone through the casing twice with the t-shirt yarn. This t-shirt yarn might be a little thick for, for that. But now what you have is this knot. I knotted on the end and all you have to do is pull that mm -hmm. and then you have a nice secure top to your bag. Wait, that's it that you need to do to make one? That's all you need to do. How easy is that? Here's another bag that we started. This was from a, a tie-dye shirt. So if you like thrifting or you like tie-dyeing, uh, the tie-dye ones are probably the most popular in, in my shop. Everyone always loves having those. Of course, we have white ones. Here's a bag that has the overlock. So I was mentioning to you about having a serger. If you do have a serger, this is a fantastic project to get yourself comfortable with your sergers. Um, also, if you're, you have a serger and you're not really sure how to use it, I host isn't this the one we helped fix? No, it's not. Uh -huh. But thank you. It looks like it because the clear blue. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Uh, as I was saying, if you do have a serger and you want to learn how to use it effectively, I have a series on my blog called Love Your Serger. And I kind of walk you guys through what a serger can do for you and how effective and um, beneficial it is to have in your sewing arsenal. Now I can't see, I know Kate wrote back here and I can't really read that far right now. Let me see if I can pull up the comments on mm, well, the, the iPad. Why don't you tell everybody what you've been doing this summer? Mm, no. I've been doing sports camp and shooting clinic. Sports camp and shooting clinic, so that's basketball, right? Mm -hmm. And then what kind of projects do you like to sew with me? What have you made in the past? I've helped you make a pillow for a project at school. A pillow that was shaped like a mountain. That was his science project. Yeah, we'll get it. Oh, he's going to get it for us. Well, you better hurry up because I finish up at 11.30. Okay. So we have been having a lot of fun sewing here in the, in the studio. We made pillowcases. We were going to start working on pajama pants. Um, what else have they sewn? Well, he just made a produce bag by himself. Uh, it's a lot of fun teaching them how to sew. Sam is a little more adventurous on what he wants to make. And Sam and I work on our cosplay costumes together. So this is a good project for sewing with kids as well. Now. I want to tell you guys something really quick before Tristan gets back. I know we keep talking about using the sleeves because by now we have four weeks of sleeves left over. And this reusable produce bag was actually born from a project that I had done with the sleeves. I had to cut the sleeves, the original, the OG produce bags back in the day were actually made from a sleeve with another sleeve sewn together. And then, please don't. 
<laughs> another sleeve sewn together, and the slits were cut oh into this. Oh, wow. There's Tristan's science project for this year. He made, what was it? Mountain. What mountain? Do you remember? And Tracy said, great job. It's supposed to be like one of the, the biggest mountains. Mount Everest. Mount Everest. Yeah, very cool. Mm. Was it easy or hard to make? Kind of easy. Kind of easy? What was the hardest part about it? Maybe, maybe like cutting the top to make it look like the mountains now. Yeah, that was a good idea. Good job. Okay, so I'm sorry. We're jumping around a little bit today. But I took two of these sleeves and I had cut them like probably a little more rectangular. Finished the top so that that was a casing just by folding it over. And then I stitched down the sides. And this was my first um, reusable produce bag prototype and it fit six apples so if you're just going out for six apples you guys make one of them boom yeah right there make one of those or buy or well i don't sell them like this anymore uh, right oh uh, so you just sell like the pieces no i don't sell the pieces people would probably have the pieces at their house okay so you would cut it so that it's a rectangle you would again do the same thing with your slot. Cut it in. Half. No, no, we don't need ah. to cut it. Just do your slits. Oh, wait, yeah. I thought you didn't cut it in half. Yet. Just like you would. Kind of going a little haphazard here, just so I can finish it up and show you guys. Hi, Rochelle. Who's like, Rochelle? We got all kinds of friends joining in today. I'm glad everybody could make it. Hope you guys enjoy our Thursday posts. So here you go. Just like that. And then you'd sew down this end. Again. Sew across the bottom and up this other side. After that, you would create a casing on your top here. And do the same. And I created that casing. I'm not sure if you can see with the, the light kind of draws it out. But folding that over and stitching it down. I hope that you guys found my little demo about the stretch stitch or using your zigzag versus the straight stitch helpful, whether you're sewing produce bags or any kind, any kind of knit without a serger. And what else? If you're out this weekend at your local farmer's market using your produce bags, Take a picture, post it on Instagram and tag me. I'll reshare it. I love seeing how you're inspired to reuse your clothing. And um, join me next week right here at 11 a.m. Eastern Time for the next Remake and Take project. Have a great weekend, you guys. And as always, feel free to comment and share this with your friends. If you have any questions, I will follow up with everyone after the video. Have a super day. Bye.